Hey guys, it's Bob, that Scottish drummer, and Happy New Year to all of you. It should be the 1st of January that this video goes out. I hope you had a good Christmas, New Year break. Hope Santa was good to you and you got some new drum and audio gear because we love that. So today we have a great video to kick off the new year. Now over the past few years, somehow I've managed to build up a bit of a mic collection and today we're going to be looking at three different kick mics. I've also recently just picked up the Earthworks kick pad, which is a pad and EQ in one. Uh, so we're going to throw that on these mics as well. And we're going to throw a mic that you might not have thought of using on the kick drum before into the mix as well. To keep things fair, all these mics are going to be running through my Focusrite Claret interface at a sample rate of 48 kilohertz with the air setting turned off. Again, like my previous mic shootout video, I'll make these recordings available to download as 24-bit WAV files in the description down below. One of our mics today does require 48 volts phantom power, so we'll test that mic first with the phantom power on, and then we will turn the phantom power off for the rest of the testing. All of our mics will be positioned just inside the porthole on the kick and pointing towards the beater. And I will adjust the gain of each microphone so that we're sitting around minus 12 dB on the levels as we record. The kick drum today is a Sakai Trilogy. It's a 22 by 14, so it's quite shallow. Uh, it's extremely thin as well. This is only a three ply kick drum, so it's really thin and light. On the batter side, I've got an Evans EMAD. In the middle, we've got the Evans EQ pillow. And on the front head, we've got a porthole cut out. And I've also got a piece of felt strip across the front there. So with all that out of the way, let's get going. First up, we have my latest kick mic, which is the Earthworks SR20 LS. This is a condenser mic, so it does require 48 volts phantom power. It has a cardioid polar pattern, frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's got 150 decibel sound pressure level. And to buy this on its own, it costs about 520 pounds or $480. Next up, we have the Shure Beta 52A. This is a dynamic mic. It has a super cardioid polar pattern and a frequency response of 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz. It also has a presence boost at four kilohertz. It has 174 decibel sound pressure level. And to buy this today is about 140 pounds or 190 US dollars. And last of the dedicated kick mics is the AKG D112. This one I have isn't the Mark II, so I guess that makes it the Mark I or the OG. The main difference between the Mark II and this one is the stand mount. They essentially just made it more like the Beta 52, which is a nice addition, but this one does work just fine. This is a dynamic mic with a cardioid polar pattern with a frequency response of 20 hertz to 17 kilohertz with a presence boost at four kilohertz. We got 160 decibel sound pressure level, and this mic can be bought for under a hundred pounds or under $200.
So I'm really happy with the results we got there. Uh, the difference between all these microphones is pretty clear to me. Uh, sometimes I listen to these tests online. I can't really hear much of a difference if I'm honest, but I think today we have some really clear results between these microphones. To me, the Earthworks is true to capture in the most accurate sound, uh, but we can hear that the Beta 52 and the D112, they have their own character from their built-in EQ. I'm now going to test all of these mics again, but we're gonna throw the Earthworks kick pad in the signal chain. This is a minus 10 dB pad with a preset EQ. I think this has been built specifically for the SR20LS, but Earthworks say that it will turn any mic into a kick mic. So to test that claim, and also for some fun, we're gonna throw an SM57 into the mix here. So we'll start with the 57, and um, we'll do an example without the kick pad, and then we'll start all of these with the kick pad. So as most of you know, the SM57 is a dynamic microphone. It has a cardioid polar pattern and a frequency response of 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz. It has a 94 decibel sound pressure level, which is a lot lower than our other mics. And this can be bought for under a hundred pounds and under a hundred dollars.
So there we have it. That wraps up our mic test for today. The difference between all these mics was quite clear to me. And it was also really cool to hear the kick pad thrown in there with each of these mics. I think the Earthworks benefited the most from the kick pad because it had the flattest frequency response. Uh, with both the Beta 52 and the D112, it just felt a bit much. It felt a bit overprocessed. You know, each of those mics kind of have their own EQ built in. To put another EQ on that, um, it just felt like overkill, really. And adding the kick pad to the SM57 actually sounded surprisingly good. I'm sure if you were in a tricky situation, I don't know, where maybe you're playing a club and they don't have a kick mic or they only have overheads and you want a kick and snare, you could probably get away with using the kick pad on a 57 to make that work. I really like the sound of the Beta 52. It's uh, punchy and present. It sounds quite modern, which is a lot of the times the sound I'm going for. The D112 had a bit more of an ambience to the sound, which is also really good. It just depends what you're going for. I do like the Earthworks SR20 LS the most. I like how it captures the sound more accurately and it leaves me free to EQ that sound as I like. And in combination with the kick pad on there, it just sounds great. Like everything with recording though, what's gonna give you the most drastic results is mic placement and the tuning of the drums. So if you've got any of these mics, you know, you already have a great mic. You don't need to go out and get all three uh, like I did. <laughs> For this test, I tried to keep everything as fair as possible so that we had like, you know, the cleanest comparison. Um, I did put the Earthworks and the SM57 just a little bit more inside the kick because it would fit. And the, the Earthworks manual says not to have it in that porthole. So you'll just have to play around with mic placement yourself to see what works on your kit and to get that sound that you're after. I really hope this helped a few of you out there. Um, I'd be really interested to know which one you like the best and why. Uh, if you already have one of these mics, what do you think of it? Why did you pick up that one? Uh, well, yeah, let's get a conversation going down in the comments below and see what everyone's using and what they think of it. I got a lot more of this stuff to come in the future. So if you enjoyed this, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. We've got 150 decibel sound pressure level and 